The other day, I rode a metro train up to Highland Park, Illinois. Almost immediately after my train left, the crossing bell ran again. I knew there was no train scheduled for another hour, so I did what every good rail fan does and waited to see what was coming. Let me tell you, that is not what I was expecting. This is known as a high rail truck. Though they're always a fun sight to see, hybrid road rail vehicles like this one are not all that uncommon. Most railroad companies have them. In fact, I think that we as human beings might have a slight obsession with combining different modes of transportation. Just think of all those boat bus tours that each waterfront city tries to lure their tourists onto. Or take these crazy... nope, nope, I promised myself I would not bring up Sky Taxis today. By far the most interesting hybrid in my opinion is the dual mode vehicle in Japan. The Asakaigan Railway is a short railway line running in a very remote part of the country. To prevent the closure of their line, they introduced these bus train mutants. On the villages on either end of the line, they run as regular buses on the road. Then, at the train station, they roll onto the rails and a set of steel wheels pops out. The bus then proceeds to run like a train over the rails to the next stop. Unfortunately, I haven't been to Japan recently. I'd love to go back, see my old home and my old friends. Not to worry though, I did visit basically the next best place, Lafayette, Indiana. I was in Lafayette for work, and as I like to do, I spent my lunch break filming in this surprisingly charming city. As I toured the bus station, I heard the familiar roar of a diesel locomotive roll by on the nearby railroad tracks. When I saw what the engines had in tow, I quickly started to run. That's because this train was made up of road railers. Ultimate American Road Rail Hybrid. These are basically semi-truck trailers that have steel wheels attached to them so they can run as train cars. The history of road railers dates back as far as 1899 depending on your definitions, but the technology as we know it today really originated in 1955, in none other than my old hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Here the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway, which has today been taken over by CSX, owned a large complex of railroad shops. These shops developed a technology known as the rail van, which was a truck trailer with two sets of wheels. One had rubber tires for road travel, the other was steel for rail travel. They were attached to each other, and if the steel wheels were down, it meant the tires were retracted, and vice versa. The trailers carried mail, which at the time was distributed around the country behind passenger trains. By the early 1960s, the cars were rebranded as road railers and they were attached to the back of CNO passenger trains between Detroit and Grand Rapids. In GR, they would be detached from the train and hauled by road to the harbor city of Muskegon. Unfortunately, in 1967, the US government canceled their mail contracts with the railroads and the need for the CNO's road railers disappeared. But then, in 1978, Conrail, which was the government-owned freight railroad company in the northeastern U.S., began operating the Empire State Express between Buffalo and New York. This train used a newly developed generation of road railers. In the 80s and 90s, other railroad companies in the U.S. began using them as well, even briefly including Amtrak. Most railroads now use them to transfer car parts rather than mail. In addition, road railers began to be used in the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, India, Austria, Brazil, and Canada. 
So what were some differences between the old and new road railers? Well, for one, their length. The old trailers were 28 feet long, or 8.5 meters, while the newer versions were 53 feet, or 16 meters. Second, rather than being attached to passenger cars, trains now ran exclusively with road railers. Initially, the new trailers also had both sets of wheels attached to them, albeit with a slightly more complicated lowering technology. But as the railroads kept experimenting, they ultimately developed a technology where the truck trailers were attached to the bogies at the rail yard. When the trailers were on the road, the bogies remained in the yards. So why do road railers exist? Well, basically they allowed railroads to save a lot of money. See, all over the world you can actually see freight trains carrying truck trailers. You'll see them crossing the Alps in Switzerland or cutting through the desert of the United States. These truck trailers are riding on top of flat cars, a name that really needs no further explanation. This is known as piggybacking, another fairly self-explanatory term. However, piggybacking on flat cars has some disadvantages. For one, a flat car loaded with a truck trailer is very heavy. By putting the trailer directly on the tracks, it greatly reduces the train's weight. This allows the locomotive to use less fuel while also cutting the braking distance in half. Huge savings and a win for safety. Furthermore, the process of attaching road railers to a train is a much simpler process. You just need to drive the trailer to the tracks, detach the truck, attach the bogies, and repeat. Piggybacking requires the use of expensive cranes and a much slower process. Using road railers speeds up the process and it allows railroads to build much smaller yards, once again reducing cost. So why is it so special for me to see these here in Lafayette? Well, because slowly but surely, road railers fell into disuse. Today, only one railroad uses them, Norfolk Southern. NS has a subsidiary called Triple Crown, which continues to operate one train of road railers several days a week. These trains carry car parts and run from Detroit, Michigan to Kansas City, Missouri, passing through Lafayette, Indiana. So why'd they go out of style? Why is there only one road railer train left? Well, like many unique technologies, the cost of upkeep is getting too high. As the cars get older, they will need more and more maintenance. Maintenance that is different from both regular train and regular truck maintenance. Railroads today prefer to use shipping containers, even if they require flat cars and cranes, as containers provide a lot more flexibility. They can be double stacked, and they can be put on trucks or ships. The question really is how much longer we'll be able to see the triple crown road railers running in the Midwest. I hope you enjoyed this video about road railers. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to Trains Are Awesome, follow us on Instagram, and check out our Patreon. Have you seen these cars before? What are some other cool hybrid vehicles you can think of? Let me know in the comments, and we'll see you next time.